It's Justin Nielsen here, your host, along with Arusha Pires, who joins me every week. He's an O'Neill Global Advisors Portfolio Manager. And we've got coming back on the show, Will Rind. He's the founder and CEO of Granite Shares. And one of the things we were talking about, um, you know, with such a strong move in such limited stocks, uh, many people have been, you know, thinking of, okay, well, instead of instead of being all diversified in stocks that aren't working, you know, should I just be putting my money in the in the winners? And maybe even more so, how can I place bigger bets on these? Uh, the use of leverage, you know, some people like to use options, um, some people like to use margin. Uh, what's what's your take on leverage, Will, and how it can be used um, appropriately and not misused uh, to to do severe damage? No, absolutely. So. We have a, um, a suite or a stable of ETFs that are an interesting new concept, really, for the industry. And that's you know, what we call leveraged single stocks. And as the name might um, describe, they are literally prepackaged leverage within an ETF on a single company. So, for example, 1.5 times leverage on NVIDIA or Coinbase or other popular stocks. And that's really kind of extending the, the leveraged ETF category from leverage ETFs that perhaps people know already, such as leverage on broad equity indices or broad bond indices, or indeed some of the uh, individual commodities to now individual stocks. And there are obviously a couple of benefits to this. You know, One is the ETF wrapper itself, which we all know um, makes it easy for people to trade you know, whenever they want uh, during the, the day or via a brokerage account. Um, and certainly it makes it more efficient than having to open a margin account with a broker, which has been you know, one of the traditional ways that people have had to, you know, to, to use to get leverage. Mm -hmm. But clearly when you're dealing with leverage of any kind, you know, whether it's an ETF, whether it's options, whether it's futures, you know, you're magnifying your exposure to a particular stock or a particular index. So the reason you do that is because on the way up, obviously if directionally, if you're correct and the stock goes up, um, then you earn more because you have a leveraged exposure to that position. But on the other side, you know, if the stock goes down or if it goes against you, you lose more um, because of the lever leveraged position. So it's definitely one of those things that you know, we all say is for sophisticated investors, for people that understand you know, how to use leverage, but can be very effective for those that are, you know, have a high conviction view on a particular stock or earning season, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. So, Will, we'll, we'll, I think the first question that probably most people listening to this podcast would have is, you know, why don't I just stick with options? It has plenty of leverage um, and, you know, there, there's a lot there's a lot of knowledge out there. Why, why don't I just, just do options in, instead of a, a levered single stock ETF? It's interesting. I, I think, you know, a number of reasons. I mean, clearly there are a lot of people who are very familiar with options and very comfortable with options. I still think, though, that um, by and large, that's still a small part of the kind of investment community. And certainly it's a higher level of, of you know, education, if you want, to kind of understand how, how options work and indeed you know, how, to, how to access them via um, brokerage accounts. But ultimately, options are binary. And that means you either win or you lose. There's no sort of halfway house. You don't win some, lose some. It's, it's just you're either going to make money or lose money. And I think that with leveraged ETFs, they're, yes, they are leveraged. And yes, you know, they share that. But they're typically you know, a lot lower or later leverage. So we're talking about 1.25 times, 1.5 times, 1.75 times in that case, and in some instances. And you can hold them in your portfolio, in your brokerage account, um, for as long as you want. In other words, you're in control of when you buy and sell. Um, and unlike options contracts where, you know, typically you might, you know, the, co the, the contract might expire worthless, you know, way before, you know, you have the opportunity to, to exercise. And so I think from that perspective, for people that I think enjoy options or, or know a lot about options, I'm not sure necessarily this, this will kind of change, you know, what they do. I think it's more for people who, look at or want to have leverage, maybe who try and get leverage via brokerage account, find that very, very clunky or, or inefficient, expensive, want an easier way of doing that. 
and or who simply use leveraged ETFs already and are very familiar with the concept, but now want to extend that to higher conviction you know, positions on individual stocks as opposed to entire uh, stock market indices. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I noticed that you were kind of talking about situations where you might be holding uh, you know, these, these levered ETF uh, single stock positions for a while. Uh, usually you hear a lot of, um, you know, the experts and, you know, the advice telling you like with the leveraged ETFs, uh, especially indexes like TQQQ, which is triple levered on the, uh, on the NASDAQ 100. And they say, look, this is the, this is the triple daily performance, but long-term you hold this and you're looking at contango backwardation and all of these things that can get you very different performance than you would expect. Um, so it's kind of like warned against long-term holding. So what, what is it about your uh, products here that kind of allow for a little bit better long-term hold, holds? Yeah. I mean, I think again, this is where some of the, there's a bit of misinformation um, in the way that this is talked about. So there are sort of two really important concepts to, to understand. The first is just mathematically how these products work and the way that they provide whatever what we call a leverage factor. It just means the amount of leverage. So whether it's 1.5 times, whether it's three times, it doesn't matter. All the products will be worth the same. And that is to mathematically provide the stated investment objective, which is, you know, 1.5 times leverage or three times leverage, you have to do that over a given day. And so hmm. the only way you can achieve that each and every day, day in, day out, is to rebalance that position at the end of the day. And so by doing the rebalancing, you're mathematically making sure that you are giving the investor the stated level of, of, uh, of leverage or as close as you can get to that stated level of leverage. But what you're doing from a performance perspective is you're changing the linear relationship with the underlying stock that I think a lot of people intuitively think that they're getting. So in other words, right. if people think they're buying two times, you know, Tesla or, you know, whatever it may be, and they think at the end of the year, whatever mm -hmm. happens, I should get two times underlying. Well, that's different because what we are doing, whatever else is, is a daily rebalance. So your performance of the fund or the, of the ETF will deviate because you're, we are reinvesting the profits if the underlying goes up, the way we'd look at it, which we call compounding. And over time, the outcome of that may be different from the underlying itself. And there are just very simple things you can think about, environments that um, will more likely than not improve or you know, discourage your chance of success. So a trending environment, for example, trending market going up, is conducive to positive outcomes for this particular process. A trending market going down, conversely, the same thing is going to be very bad for you if you're levered to the upside. And then the one that probably confuses people the most is where you have a choppy market mm -hmm. where the market's going up and down and up and down and up and down. And with a higher level of leverage, you know, that again can really hurt or impact returns because of this daily rebalancing process. So that's, that's, first of all, just like how they work. And that's the reason why the state investment objective is always about one day, because that is what they're designed to do. I think where, where people get confused is that doesn't mean you can only hold them for a day. Mm -hmm. That's a very different concept. And it sounds quite similar, but it's a different thing. So what we always say is you should, you should not hold them unless you're actively monitoring your portfolio. Because when you're using leverage and you're talking about underlyings which are volatile by definition, you should be actively monitoring your portfolio, actively looking at these positions. So that again goes back to saying, it's not that you can't do that, you shouldn't do that. It's just that we don't want people, you know, buying and then, you know, leaving the position for a year and then waking up one day, looking at the portfolio and seeing, that, you know, it's dramatically Surprise. different from what they thought and, and then sort of say, oh, hey, how did this happen? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, well, is this a like really kind of these single stock levered ETFs? Is that a pretty new trend that's going on? I feel like I haven't heard too much about it. So, I mean, how new is this, or has has it been just been slowly kind of growing underneath the surface? It, it's really new. Um, okay. We started doing this 
first products in the summer of last year, kind of late, late summer of last year. And then we released a second batch at the end of last year. So it's very new. Now we Granite Shares have been doing this business for a few years in Europe, obviously totally different markets. Um, but in the US, yes, it's very new. So it, it's, you know, people will be familiar with leveraged ETFs um, on broad indices in the bond market and in the equity market, also on the commodity side, but we've never had this new category, which is providing leverage on single stocks or, single, or individual companies. So, so it's, a, it's a new concept for people. Mm-hmm. And, you know, real quickly, can we talk about going the other way? Because I know that one of the other things that's out there now uh, are the single stock inverse, uh, you know, and sometimes those are levered where you can basically go short. And certainly there is a benefit there, especially if you're trading in a a retirement account, for instance, where you're not allowed to go short. Now, all of a sudden, you uh, you have a way to do it without kind of running afoul of the rules. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and I think, you know, these are becoming more and more popular, Justin, because it's not just, you know, limited to professional investors, that the mm-hmm. vast majority of investors, including professional investors, can't go short. So they are restricted from going short for different fund mandate reasons. But when we have a situation like we had last year, where practically everything you bought was going down, right. um, having a short you know, fund or a way to implement an inverse exposure would have been really useful um, for hedging purposes. And so I think it's something that people are learning more and more about and will becoming becoming more popular, um, but certainly a useful tool, again, in the active investors toolkit. Mm-hmm. So what 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 are the what are the levered ETFs that you have right now on on the different stocks? So we have a stable of of ones that we launched again. People always ask, you know, why these particular companies? And it's not it's not an exact science. Um, clearly, we have designs on launching a lot more, but mm-hmm. we have Tesla, we have Alibaba, we have Coinbase, um, we have Nvidia, we have Meta, or formerly Facebook. Um, we have Apple. So we have a few of the big, big names. And I think it's partly because they're, you know, companies that people are very familiar with, you know, to explain to anybody what those companies do or who those companies are. They're very well owned, very well traded. But I think also they, they sort of represent slices of the market, which are interesting to us. So NVIDIA for AI has been the big one, you know, this year, you know, Alibaba for a China proxy, you know, Coinbase for crypto, et cetera, et cetera. And so we've tried to to nuance the selection as well by, you know, I think picking stocks which represent, you know, something perhaps more than just a company to certain investors. And yeah. so again, it's just the just the start of, you know, what will be a larger offering from us in the space. Mm-hmm. And, you know, with, um, you know, the way that some of these work, I mean, certainly when you look at an ETF, um, I guess you kind of rely on arbitrage sometimes if, if there's a larger spread, um, it's not as liquid, you, you don't, you know, are, are there issues that come in here where maybe you're um, getting killed on the spread if, if they're not as liquid or um, is that something that's improving? Um, are, are there, I guess what I'm looking for, are, are there downsides that people need to be aware of uh, before they kind of go into these, you know, things, buyer beware type things? No, absolutely. Um, I mean, first, the, the most obvious buyer beware is what we've talked about, which is mm-hmm. these are leveraged ETFs. They're not regular run-of-the-mill unleveraged ETFs. So because they're leveraged, leverage also, you know, in of itself is more risky than not leveraged. Um, they have a daily rebalancing, a compounding effect that people need to understand. Mm-hmm. But beyond that, they're just ETFs, and mm-hmm. therefore they have the same risks as most other ETFs. And like you said, if there's no trading volume um, in a particular ETF, you're gonna have wide spreads. Mm-hmm. If you have wide spreads, that means your execution cost is gonna be higher than a similar fund that doesn't have high spreads. And so that is just a, um, you know, that, that is the, the, the common feature with all ETFs. Mm-hmm. With, these, with these ones though, what's interesting is because they're inherently trading vehicles, I put them in a different category to regular ETFs. And it's not because they're leveraged. Um, It's because I view them as being trading vehicles and they're part of a trading toolkit. 
And it's interesting because we're catering to a type of investor that trades more actively. That doesn't mean they're a day trader or things like that. It doesn't it? You know, we don't need to talk in extremes. It just means that somebody who has an active interest in the market, who manages their portfolio more actively than your average investor. And so with that, I think comes this customer that likes to trade or certainly trades more actively. And because of that, you'll see the volume in these particular products you know, can be, not always the case, but can be very high. Mm. Um, and that reflects the fact that this is used more as a trading vehicle than say a traditional ETF, which sometimes can take a long, long time to get traction. And you're right, Justin, spreads can be high because there's just no liquidity or very low liquidity in the market. Um, but in these cases, it's not necessarily because the underlying stocks are liquid. It's more that there's just a lot of natural demand, um, both you know supply and demand on the secondary market. And so if people look at the trading volume in these particular names, I think they might be pleasantly surprised versus some of the ETFs they've seen. And certainly it's not uncommon for us to trade more um, let's say, value in a day than the entire AUM of the fund. Um, <laughs> so they're very, very mm. well traded. And mm. you know, I think, again, that goes back to it's more of a trading vehicle than, than a buy and hold you know, forever type investment. Yeah. And how are these uh, traders generally finding out about these products? Because, um, I mean, they're so <laughs> new that, it, I mean, this is like the first time that I've really heard about them. It's a great question. I wish I knew the answer to that because you know, it's something <laughs> tell your marketing we, department, right? <laughs> I know. Yeah, secret. no, it, 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 it is. It, it's that tough kind of yeah. scenario, right? Where you have this product, you're trying to get it. Uh, I mean, it, it's more kind of like kind of that. It's just going to take time, right? And all of a sudden, yeah. it'll probably just explode. Uh, kind of probably like the cues w- w- went through. 20 years ago when they were introduced or whatever. Yeah. Right? People probably didn't trust it. Now I'm going to stick with my mutual funds, but then now, you know, every, everyone's trading them left and right. Yeah. I mean, what, what I can say is there's no doubt in this market, there's a community of, you know, highly educated, sophisticated investors that know, seem, seem to be able to, to tell exactly when something's come out that they want to trade or that they're interested in. And it can sort of capture, you know, capture the moment in a way that's unlike any other market that we're involved in. And you know, we always ask ourselves the same questions. I mean, of course we issue a press release and who doesn't, but mm. it's not enough to, to grab people's attention. And there's obviously people that you know, know what they're looking for. You can find obviously with all the search engines, you can find that very quickly you know, now. And so I think if you're just, you, know, you, you manage to intersect that, you know, that demand you know, with the right product, when people are looking for, hey, how do I get leveraged on a video? Or how do I play AI, as an example, um, that we've seen? And, and then the intersection is Google or Bloomberg, or whoever it is, will return, you know, our leveraged NVIDIA ETF. And for the right person that's looking for that exact thing, it's a perfect intersection. And then there's intent created and they go buy the product. That's the only mm-hmm. thing I can think of, but that's yeah. just... That's not scientific. That's just a, a gut feeling. Well, hopefully right. Chat GPT is also giving those answers too, because a lot of people are starting <laughs> to go more and more towards that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I think when, when, when yeah. No, oh no, go ahead, Will. No, no, I think it, it, it's interesting because going back to one of the comments you made originally, Justin, about you know how are people using this and, and why, you know, why might somebody use um, something like a leverage single stock? And the NVIDIA one's been a great a really interesting case for us because there's actually been a number of articles written about this, that a lot of these ideas or themes or concepts, whatever you want to call them in ETF world, that they're very hard to actually express in the form of an ETF. So you might have an ETF that is on, just to take an example, blockchain. We'll talk about AI in a second, but it might be blockchain. And the investor might say, well, that's brilliant. I want to play blockchain. I want to get access to the blockchain. So I'm going to buy this ETF. And then when they look at the underlying components, they might be quite surprised to see right. a list of companies, including maybe some of the global banks in there that for all intents and purposes have nothing to do with blockchain. Mm-hmm. And it's the same thing that happened with AI, that you know, clearly AI, phenomenal you know, potential, something that everybody's talking about. But how do you invest in it? And there are AI ETFs out there. I think when 
people started to to invest in some of these products. I mean, a good article is written about how people haven't participated in the pop. Um, and the reason for that in many cases is that there aren't that many companies that are truly mm-hmm. in AI or powering AI at the forefront of AI. And what they've actually got is a broader tech basket, you know, which is not the same thing. And that's why people have led to something like NVIDIA and obviously our NVDL, which is leveraged NVIDIA as a way for people to express a conviction view on something and to say, you know, I, I, I know exactly what I want. Here's, here's the particular product. And I don't want to be diluted right. by a load of companies that you know, ostensibly have nothing to do with what I'm, what I'm looking for.